Hello friends. Today I want to start with a short story that really struck with me. This is quite a famous story out there on internet and goes like this. You might know India is full of tea shops. The guy who is selling tea makes around 50 to 100 cups of tea daily. Quite common to hear from the guy who is selling tea telling you how a prime minister should do his job or even how a star athlete should play his game. He got advice for everybody but only problem with him is he doesn't know how to make a good tea. <laughs> Sounds funny but I really felt like the guy who is selling tea when I heard this story. I have been to a tea shop several times I can relate to this very closely. Then I felt if I have to give a reasonable advice, it should be something related to people soft because that's what I work on day in and day out. Truth be told guys, a lot of times I don't understand people soft system behavior or not sure what is the best practice in my specific scenario. That's when I look up to experts or legends who are better than me. Today friends, I want to share with you 5 tips I learned from our people soft guru Jim Marion. Since now you know my plan, without any more delay, let's get started. Have you seen this error message? I have, in fact, a lot of times, but I never knew what caused it. Thanks to Jim Marion, now I know what caused it and how to avoid this unnecessary headache. You will also know that secret in the next couple of minutes. See, if we try to click OK on this message, it is followed by another SQL error, which is deadly. I mean, if we try to ignore that error message and continue with our changes, and if we try to save it, as you saw, we were kicked out of the app designer and all our changes are gone in the wind. Now, let's try to understand the root cause behind this error message. According to Jim, this error pops up when we try to open objects which are dependent on each other at the same time inside app designer and making simultaneous changes. Let me show you how to replicate this error so that you will understand what I mean. To replicate this error, I will pick two objects which are dependent on each other. For this demonstration, I will pick menu and component definitions. You can use any component and menu which are associated with each other. I will pick the ones shown on the screen. I will go ahead and open these two definitions in my app designer at the same time. Alright, I have opened two objects which are associated with each other in App Designer. Now I'll go ahead and make some changes to component and will not save it. I'll make some changes to the label. As you saw, I made some changes to my component but I did not save it. Now I will navigate to my menu definition and do the same thing. We'll make some changes to menu definition but will not save it. Now I'll navigate back to my component and save my changes. So far so good, I was able to successfully save my changes. Here comes the tricky part. If I navigate back to the menu and try to save it, boom, this is when we will receive this error, which I feel is not very accurate because no one else modified except me. This is what I think would have happened behind the scenes. When we open menu definition for the first time, usually it saves a copy of menu definition from database into our local client cache folder, you know that PS folder. Since components are associated with a menu, it also brought in those component definitions as part of menu buffer. But we changed one of those component definitions inside app designer. Menu wasn't aware of changes done to the component because we already opened menu before we made changes to component. Hence, 
when we try to save our menu with our changes system is complaining that the original data that you fetched as part of menu is no longer the same people soft before saving any data it compares the data that was changed in the current buffer with the original buffer and issues sql update statement to update the values that user modified but in our case the original data itself is corrupted that's why you see this sql error illegal sql cursor detected because we modified the original buffer that was created for menu anyways that is my theory now let's talk about the solution proposed by jim never open objects that are associated with each other or that are dependent on each other to avoid this headache in the future only open the objects that you want to work on in app designer in our case if we want to work on component we have to close the menu so that next when we open menu it will have accurate component information that's it guys i hope you got the point and this concludes my first tip i learned from jim marion tip number 2 for many years i thought we can register only from component maybe that's just me i normally used to open the component and click this button to register the component and i would manually uncheck this flag because i would have already added this component to a menu and follow the next steps but jim in one of his youtube videos showed me how to register directly from menu let me open a menu after opening menu definition click on menu item next we can open the menu item right click on the menu item that you want to register and register from here this is something i wasn't aware before but definitely useful tip tip number 3 i noticed jim using one option in app designer that i wasn't aware or used before mostly to compare two pages especially between fluid and classic pages this option is right under my nose but never used it first open the people tools definitions you want to use then navigate to window and click on cascade what this option does is it allows two people tools objects to be active at the same time for example we can work on a new page looking at the existing page now i'm dragging a record field into my new page by looking at the existing page we can also take it a step further you can even work on the existing page as well as on the new page at the same time and save the, both the changes at once likewise we can compare two people code events side by side we can browse through different events by keeping both windows active i hope you got my point tip 4 is about fluid css styles in fluid we might have to play with different css styles to get the results we want i never knew how easy it is to play with different css styles right within chrome browser not until i watched jim marion's youtube videos let me show you a quick example on how to do it i will open a fluid page and i will show you how to apply a basic css style right from chrome browser you can use any fluid page for this demonstration i will use time entry fluid page for this demonstration let's change the text color of the save button to green using a css style first i will click on the menu and then more tools developer tools then i will click on element selector and place my cursor on the element where i want to change the text color i will click on it and then if you see my bottom right hand corner there is a plus button where i can add a new style rule i will click on it and here 
I will add my CSS style color green. That's it. As you can see immediately, you can see the result. The text has changed to green color. But if we refresh the page, our new style will be gone. In order to persist our style in our PeopleSoft environment, we can click on the temporary file that Chrome browser created for us with the new style that we added. Here we have the CSS style that we created for our save button. Let's copy it. I'll go ahead and create a new style sheet. Let's select free from sub style sheet. Let me paste our CSS style here. I will go ahead and save our style sheet. Next, in order to kick in our new style, we have to add our style sheet in page activate people code. Let's go ahead and do that. After saving our changes, if we refresh our page, green color stays intact. That's it guys, even though this is a very simple example, I hope you grasped the power. My last tip goes in similar lines with my previous tip. Instead of CSS style, now I'll show you how to apply a JavaScript on a PeopleSoft Fluid page and ensure to persist that change in our PeopleSoft environment. Just like last time, I'll click on the Chrome menu, More Tools, Developer Tools. Then I will select the element selector and place the cursor on the element that I plan to make the change. For this demo, let's change the label from save to save later using JavaScript. I will click on it and I will grab the ID of our field. In order to apply JavaScript, I will navigate to console tab. Here we can write our JavaScript. I will select our HTML document dot query selector to select the element on our HTML page and let's select our element that we copied before and let's change the text and with semicolon I'll, I'll click enter immediately after my change you can see my label got updated. In order to persist this change, I'll copy this code, I'll navigate to page activate people code and add fluid people code function, add onload script to execute our JavaScript. Here, I will paste our JavaScript. I will go ahead and save our people code changes. Now, if we refresh our page, our HTML changes are intact. That's it guys. This is one of the ways we can play with JavaScript inside PeopleSoft application. I know making videos is not an easy task. I want to personally appreciate Jim Marion for putting valuable content for free and educating us in PeopleSoft. Guys, feel free to check out his YouTube channel. If you learn something new, a tip or trick from Jim, please share it in the comment section below, it might help someone.